What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we're talking about DeMar DeRozan. He was on the Draymond Green show. We're going to talk about that, talk about the clutch factor when it comes to, to DeMar. We're going to get into Billy Donovan's comments as well on the new additions to the Chicago Bulls bench. And then lastly, we'll be getting into season predictions for Javante Green. We're going to do all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome. You can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me on Chicago Bulls Central. I'm the host here, Hayes, and we're jumping right in. So DeMar DeRozan was on the Draymond Green show in which he talked about him inheriting the ghost of Michael Jordan. Like, it... it Listen, this interview, hearing DeMar DeRozan and the way that he talks about Michael Jordan, the way that he talks about Chicago, the way that he talks about the arena, the way that everything, it just makes you feel good and you realize why he's such a leader and a force on this team. You know, he talked about how he missed, uh, airballed that uh, that game winner against the, uh, the New York Knicks and how he never wanted to feel that again. And he went on to have one of the best seasons in his, well, the best season, at least statistically, of his career in the Chicago Bulls uniform, all the clutch moments and everything after that, it just, you know, just everything with with Demar Derozan, it just it just feels good, and it, I think it really does um, display the new culture of the Chicago Bulls. Just the fact, not just the fact that we we're able to sign Demar Derozan, we know we were not his first, um, you know, desired destination. He would have liked to go to L.A., go back home. But the fact, once that deal went through, he came to Chicago, he's embraced the culture in Chicago, he's embraced the city, he's embraced the fans, and it just feels good. And, you know, some people, I, I think, overlook that to a degree, and not not a lot, right? DeMar is very much appreciated, even so much in Bulls Nation thinking that, hey, people saying, hey, this is now DeMar's team, it's no longer Zach Levine's team, which you guys know I, I disagree with that. But, you know, all of that, and just the, like I said, just the, the air around DeMar DeRozan being a Chicago Bull, everything, it just... It just feels different, and I'm glad to have him here. Now, one of the things that came out in this as well is Draymond Green saying he tried to recruit DeMar to Golden State. Imagine if the Golden State Warriors were able to add a player like DeMar DeRozan um, to what they did there. DeMar would have definitely had a ring, but just it's it, it's just crazy to think. the. I always think about the, the possibilities, the deals that don't happen sometimes in the NBA because there's a lot of them, but you know. We, we, we're not going to think about that too much because guess where he is? He's here in Chicago where he should be. And so one of the things that's come out as well in the last 24 hours is clutch shots made since 2012. This list, top five clutch players since 2012 where the number of shots made uh, has been crazy. Uh, so we're, we're looking at DeMar being number one with 64. Um, you know, shout out to DeMar DeRozan and what he's able to do. Uh, it's just Seeing DeMar ranked amongst the best clutch players in the NBA, um, it just continues to it, it, it just to make you feel good, right? DeMar DeRozan, since 2012, we're t- talking about the last decade of the NBA, has led the NBA in clutch shots made. That's huge, and that's why you add a player like DeMar DeRozan. Now, second on the list was Steph Curry at 62, uh, Dame Lillard at three, tied for three with with uh, with Russell Westbrook at 61, and then LeBron James with 55. But when it's all said and done, this is about DeMar. And, uh, you know, we're a Bulls podcast, and, you know, it's good, and hopefully we're, we see DeMar hit more clutch shots going into next season um, as well for the Chicago Bulls and for uh, another year to come at the very least if he doesn't reappear here and hopefully – Debo doesn't retire. So this is, you know, before we move on from this topic, like one of the things that I do love as far as the Draymond Green show and why he has such a future in this. And as somebody who's a podcaster and things like this, a creative, I do appreciate Draymond Green and what he does do in the interviews that he has and what he was able to pull out of DeMar in this one. Um, and, and, and same thing happened last season as well, if you guys remember correctly. So Draymond is, is very good. I do want to acknowledge that but it the, the access that we have to players nowadays, I think sometimes, I know I can say that I I I sometimes miss it, right? And don't appreciate it as much as I should, because it's it's a it's a rarity. And you know, shout out to Damar, shout out to, to Draymond for having this show. Uh you guys make sure you go and check it out if you have not already. Let's go ahead and move into the next topic for today. Billy Donovan had uh finally made comments about the bull the additions to the Chicago Bulls bench and Goran Dragic. And Andre Drummond, and this is the direct quote uh, that uh, he loves the team. Signed Goran Dragic and Andre Drummond. I think those guys can really 
help us. And Billy Donovan also dropped a mini update on Lonzo Ball so that he continues to improve and is moving in a very positive direction. Now, that last part that goes with kind of what we heard from LeVar Ball saying that Lonzo is going to be ready by the start of the season. So shout out there. Hopefully that does come correct and come to fruition. But outside of that, you know, saying how that Goran Dragic and Andre Drummond, it, it really isn't a lot here, but he did speak on it. Now, I do think that especially Drummond. I think he's going to help more than what some Bulls are starting to think. I, I've seen a lot of comments in the community about Andre Drummond and that we didn't add true rim protection and things like that. I, I know I wanted a, bit, a bigger shot block as well, right? Let me be clear here in saying and admitting, I hope that the Bulls were going to sign a big time shot blocker. They did not do that. But Andre Drummond is going to be the best big that we've had off the bench, uh, better than anything that we had last season and more consistent. That's the thing with Andre Drummond. Is consistency. You know what you're going to get in him, get from him day in and day out, and that's what makes you know as a bench player, as a role player, special. You're absolutely going to to you know, and unless things change, but I do think that from Drummond, you're going to get very good consistency and not the bad. Like we got some some stuff consistently bad from some of our backup bigs last season, right? But we're going to get consistency from him and the ability to produce. He can score some, and especially if he's out there with Lonzo Ball, if Lonzo is healthy, what Lonzo is going to be able to do with Andre Drummond in the pick and roll, I think is going to be huge. Now, one of the, the signings that I have not admittedly been as big on is the signing of Goran Dragic. Now, I don't think Goran is going to have as big of an impact. I mean, shout out to Billy Donovan. He's the coach. He would know better than me. I'm just not, I don't know. It's not that I was down on the signing. I'm not. I just... I don't think that in a world of everybody being healthy, I just don't see Gorn being the player that I would want to see get the most minutes if you're looking at, and I know some people are going to say Kobe White, but he he's, doesn't even have the scoring ability over Kobe White, but I'm still looking at Alice Caruso, Io DeSumo, all being above him on that guard depth chart. And the player that we're going to do some uh, talking about later on in, in Javante Green, I think he's going to get some minutes at the guard this season as well. So it's like, not point guard, of course, but at, at the shooting guard. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. And, you know, I hope that it does. It's not that I want to see either one of these guys fail. I do hope that they come in, they have a role, they have an impact, they play in that role very well, and they give us what we're hoping for from these players because we know we need more bench production. We need solid and consistent bench production as well. One of the things, we did not get solid bench production last season, even some of the players that did play well because they didn't stay in the on the bench. A lot of them got moved into the starting lineup for large parts of the season, like Io DeSumo. Alice Caruso was out long part. Uh, uh, Kobe White, very uh, a very inconsistent player. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Derek Jones Jr., inconsistent as well, and he had injuries. Uh, also, we already talked about the backup centers in that in that case, and we know Troy Brown Jr. just wasn't consistent. At the end of the day, I'm hoping that we get consistent production from the players that we've added to this bench, and just whatever that is. And you know, you you do expect that whatever they give you, it is going to be positive. So. Whatever they can give us, as long as they can give it to us consistently, is going to help big time with upping the impact that this bench had from last season. Now, last, very last topic before we get into Javante Green season predictions. Now, this is several front office changes came last season. A lot of these, you know, in the long run, how do they change and impact the team? We'll see. I'm not expecting much as long as the people at the top in Acme um, and AK and uh, Mark Eversley, and I need to do a better job. Somebody mentioned this like a week ago as well. I do need to do a better job, admittedly, at talking about the impact that Mark Eversley had on this team as well. Let's be clear with that. He's had a big part in it also. But as long as those two guys are still at the top, we trust it. Now, the Bulls did. Uh, Pat Connolly moved um, into assistant GM. He's replacing J.J. Polk, who was not listed on this at all. Uh, but the one of the more important things, well, let me not say important, but one of the more things that I'm looking at here is Shaquin Albro is named as the senior manager of team uh, of team services and player development. Now, the team services part, I have no idea what that means. I don't I don't I don't know the player development part. Now, I talked about it before how the Chicago Bulls did not have a shooting coach. Now, I'm not saying that Shaquin Al Albro isn't isn't going to be a shooting coach, but if he's on player development, hopefully he's one of those people that get a shooting coach in here right we need that that's one of the things like it's not a question right um and you know you look at some of the things and you know when I heard that the Bulls didn't have a shooting coach it did very much surprise me but you know hopefully him stepping into that position maybe we get 
some more development coaches in here as well to help develop a lot of the young players that we have here. So, you know, shout out to, you know, uh, Pat Connolly for getting a, for getting a, a promotion there. Shaquan Albro, shout out to him as well. And hopefully, you know, we continue to see development of these young players because that's going to be a huge thing. And, and, you know, when you bet on consistency, development has to be a huge part of that from your younger players. Now, Joe Cowley, um, after this, did mention as well that, Expect the Bulls to have a new sponsor on their jerseys this season. Moving on from Zinni, who I believe has been our sponsors on our jerseys for the last two seasons, if not more. Somebody correct me in the in the comments. Uh, but at least la the last two seasons, Zinni Optical has been uh, on the Bulls jersey. So let's see. Um, I'm going to ask you guys this and present this question to you. Who do you think the new sponsor, if this does come to fruition and it's true that we're going to have a new sponsor, who do you think that new sponsor is going to be? Let me know that down below. Okay. Let's get into the main thing that we are here to discuss for today, and that is Javante Green and his season projections for me, predictions for me go to, going into the 22-23 season. Now, let's talk about the season he had last season. 7.2 points per game, uh, great from him. 4.2 rebounds per game, uh, right under, basically an assist per game for him with a PER of 14.05, had a low usage rating of 11%, and then he had a defensive rating of 112.4. So, with all that being said, right? Looking at Javante Green, throw the stats out the window again. He's just one of those players where the stats almost doesn't matter. We know Javante's a dog. If we have anyone on the team, uh, I know people have questioned that and who plays that role for the Chicago Bulls. Javante Green is definitely that. A player who came in, and in the season that we initially traded for him, he only played 16 games after we got him, right? And in those games, he averaged eight minutes, had a huge uptick in that from playing, from, from playing in only 16 games, no starts, to playing in 65 games, having 45 starts, and playing 23.4 minutes per game for the Chicago Bulls last season. That's huge. He did have a three-point shooting percentage of 35%, overall field goal percentage of 54%, and a free throw percentage of 83.3%. So, Javante Green, the fact of the matter is, Javante didn't get a lot of shots, right? He averaged last season uh, 0 0.6 to 1.6. I keep reading the wrong stat. He, had, he, had, he averaged uh, last season 2.7 to 5 shots per game for Javante Green. Now, that's not a huge number by any stretch of the imagination, but he did hit those at a good clip. Now, we've also heard from Javante Green that he's been working on his three-point shooting to be a bigger threat and more consistent there for the Chicago Bulls. Now, a player that already shot it at 35.6% 30, for the Chicago Bulls last season, if he can up that and be more consistent at a higher clip, that's going to be huge. One of the biggest things is that I'm looking for from Javante Green heading into the season is how does he now play for us now being in his natural position? He's probably he's not going to be in, at power forward very much at all, hopefully next season. Again, let's knock on wood. Marco being there, Andre Drummond being there, uh, uh, Derek Jones Jr. Hopefully Javante Green can play his more natural position of the two slash three. And if uh, considering the impact he gave us defensively, playing as an undersized power forward, for the majority of the, no, let me not say majority, for the whole season last season, what he can give us moving to that more natural position, giving us that same defense and energy and intensity coming in, getting into the uh, into the fast break with Lonzo, with Io DeSumo, the chemistry is already built there. I'm not going to put a number projection, projection on it because we got to see how the lineup shakes up, especially, you know, with Goran Dragic and, you know, talk around there of how many minutes Goran Dragic is going to get and whatnot. But all that conversation aside, Javante is going to get production for us. When you, he's one of those players where it's, you can't really use numbers to just gauge him. But him, if he can, if he can be a more consistent shooter, uptick that a little bit more, especially coming off the bench, build that chemistry with Alice Caruso, Io DeSumo. We'll see what happens with the other bench roles on this team. You're looking at a player who's going to come in high energy, ha high athleticism. He's going to get a ton of posterizing dunks this season, but I'm really thinking Javante Green is going to be a key sub for us. And by that, I don't just mean, oh, we know what the minutes we're going to give us. I mean, when Javante Green gets in the game, I think he's going to maybe up the intensity, up that energy some every single time. And that's what I want to see from Javante Green. The defensive intensity, the blocks, the, 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 sh the not really shut down defense, more disruptive defense is I think what Javante Green plays. I'm not going to, people throw around shut down defense a little too freely sometimes. I don't think it's shut down defense, but it absolutely is a disruptive defense that he brings uh, from, from that bench unit. Javante coming off the bench, other lineups beware because Javante is, is gonna is that player that especially if the starters are playing well and then you bring a player with Javante's energy and defensive intensity coming off, the players are gonna be like, God damn it, can we get can we catch a break? 
That's what I'm looking for from Javante Green. That focus, that that consistency, being that player that maybe doesn't get um that doesn't have the huge averages, but he hits the big shots. He hit he makes those key plays. He gets those key steals. He gets those uh that those key dunks that changes the momentum of the game. That's what I want to see from Javante Green going into next season. Um, it's and and he he can do it. That's something that he can very well do, and he may even shine above that, as we've seen with Javante, right? The player, and I kind of get into this a little bit, and then I stop talking about it. That that was a throw in in a trade, didn't get very many minutes. Comes in is your starting power forward because of injury, and shines right in being that undersized player. Yes, there were times where being undersized absolutely hurt Javante, but for the most part, he was everything he was advertising, everything the Chicago Bulls needed him to be, and I look for that to continue. From Javante Green going into the 22-23 season, let me know down below what type of impact do you think Javante Green can and will have for this team? Do you think and agree with me that him moving to his more natural position is going to unlock even more things for his game? Let me know all that down below. But that is it for today's episode for Chicago Bulls Central. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being the best part of Chicago Bulls Central as well. Make sure you follow the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions comments, concerns, Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm Hayes. Thank you guys for joining me. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. 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 Media.